forward to welcoming kids and their families, youth, and all members of the public interested in checking out the new BGC programs, as well as the re renovated community space in the Parksville Community Center. The, in, the event includes kids entertainment, crafts, refreshments, and tours of the updated Parksville Community Center. As well, BGC will host a career fair in the afternoon from noon to 3 p.m. And Councillor Patterson has an announcement to make. Um, thank you, Your Worship. It was in regards to our correspondence from Spark BC. Um, unfortunately, we didn't receive this until late in, in May, and th the Access Awareness Day on June 4th is now passed. But uh, we did receive some um, paperwork and everything in regards to um, $500 accessibility grants that I wanted to make aware. And um, it, it's just, it really is um, throughout um, the month of, of uh, June. So, um, and it also marks the 25th annual celebration of Access Awareness Day. So the theme this year is accessibility is inclusion. So I did want to mention some of that to ongoing. Thank you. Thank you for the clicking. We have three items on the agenda, the consent agenda tonight. I need a mover and a seconder for all three. And we'll move from there. Move and second, move by Councillor Chandler, second by Councillor Greer. Any discussions? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. We have one delegation tonight, and it's from the Mid Island Habitat Enhancement Society. Would you like to come forward? I only have one name on, so I didn't say the one name. And so you, you can introduce yourselves if you would, please. And you have up to 10 minutes to tell us about what you're going to talk to tonight. Nope. There you go. Okay. Oh. Um, good evening, Mayor, Council, and visitors. My name is Joanne McElveen, and I am here with Barb Riordan on behalf of the Mid-Vancouver Island Habitat Enhancement Society, or MIVIS for short. We are a local group dedicated to the preservation and restoration of wild salmon and trout habitats. The city has existing stormwater management plans and policies that do not address the impacts on the aquatic environments. We are here to tell you that rainwater is a resource rather than a problem solved by implementing multiple drainage pipe projects. We are offering a solution in the form of rain gardens. We are pleased, pleased that Mayor Main has declared this the year of the garden. We are suggesting put the word rain in front of garden. Simply put, the ground and forest act like a sponge, assisting an interflow into local rivers and streams known as groundwater recharge or bioretention. Plants and soils filter pollutants from stormwater. This is a typical Parksville neighborhood, which was forested at one time. Now the sponge is gone. The water from homes and pavement drains straight into storm drains. The drains connect to a network of underground pipes that empty directly into fish habitat, a creek, a river, an estuary, or straight onto our beaches. A schematic of Parksville's current stormwater management. We need to update development standards regarding rainwater management, i.e. green infrastructure policies, which include bioretention and pollution control standards. Water from the roadways and buildings flowing into Shelley Creek, a fish spawning creek, during normal rain events, this causes major erosion. However, during dry spells, the creek dries up. There is no groundwater recharge because the rainwater disappears too rapidly down storm drains. With climate change and current practices, high water and drought events are intensifying. In addition to these problems of water quantity, there are problems of water quality. Storm drains take litter, plus pollution such as car washing cleaners, power washing debris, 
cigarette butts, lawn fertilizers, etc., with the water down the drain. Phosphorus from lawn fertilizer leads to algae blooms that decrease water quality, which suffocates fish and aquatic life. 80% of plastic garbage in the ocean, and a huge amount of oil pollution too, gets there by going down storm drains. Tire and brake dust containing zinc and copper, both highly toxic to fish. A new toxin from car tires called 6-PPD, quinome, is extremely toxic to fish. Romney Creek stormwater outfall. This is an example of one of five outfalls that flow directly onto Parksville Beach. MIVIs monitor forage fish spawning sites on Parksville Beach. These sand lances are an integral part of the salmon and whale food chain. This past November and December, sand lance eggs were found at McMillan and PCP2 sites. The eggs are extremely sensitive to pollution. Let's treat rainwater as a resource and use it to conserve aquatic habitats. One method is by building rain gardens. Rain gardens are not difficult to build. Here are some examples, starting with Mountain Equipment Co-op in North Vancouver. All the downspouts in the parking areas flow into the rain garden. A curb-free street with boulevard rain gardens. Curb cutouts in North Delta feed directly into the rain garden. garden pardon me. Water is then filtered in the rain garden naturally and allowed to become part of the sponge recharge system. Simple pavement pumps redirect rainwater from a large parking lot into a rain garden. Rain gardens have a safe overflow route via raised drains to prevent flooding during high rain events. The drains are raised slightly to allow water to pool for better infiltration. All the rainwater from the roof of the Arts and Cultural Centre in North Delta flows directly into a large rain garden. The parking lot also flows into the rain garden. Rain gardens slow the flow of rain by temporarily storing water. Why not do the same thing in Parksville? This building here could water multiple rain gardens. Nice garden. The water comes from the Englishman River in Parksville. As a community, let's leave the water in the river for aquatic health. Let's build rain gardens instead. Mibby's volunteers at the one rain garden at the fire hall in Parksville. We're always ready to collaborate with the city in the creation of more rain gardens. In closing, I would like to say that we need to put rainwater back into our ground with rain gardens in as many public and private buildings as we can. Rainwater is a valuable resource, not a problem. What can our city do to get best practices with regard to rainwater management? We encourage the city to develop rain gardens into urban planning and current infrastructures. Let's celebrate the year of the rain garden. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the delegation? Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Your Worship. I don't really have a question, but I want to say that we, our um, ops department put in a, a rain garden behind the city here little bit of a rain garden at the Boys and Girls Club. Cool. Yes, it is Fantastic. cool. And, uh, and thank you. We went on the, the tour as well with Barb. And um, yeah, so I, I had one other thing to say, but it slipped my mind. So I'll come back to it. <laughs> Things like that happen when you get old. No, in this case, the, the rain garden is just alongside the, the grassy knoll. So it's just a, a way for water to pool there. I don't believe, but it, it could be. And, and perhaps operations might know more about that than I do. Um, it is adjacent to the, the lane. So It may possibly be capturing some of the water from the laneway, but it would certainly be capturing some of the water that's that may not uh, infiltrate the, the, gr the ground around it. So, but I know that uh, Michael pointed out and Lonsdale pointed out that they've built a little rain garden, which is done. So you can check it out the back. Maybe, maybe they didn't do it right. I don't know, but I'm quite sure he did. Fantastic. So we toured a preschool in North Delta and off the roof of the preschool building, they get 3 million liters of water a year that they put back into the ground. 
It's astronomical. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Patterson. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, there's also a rain garden uh, at the corner of the fire hall here in town. That's the one I mentioned. Oh, yeah. that one as well. Um, I have one in my home. That's how I do most of my, my watering for my, for my gardens and such and rain um, barrels and that as well. It is included in our um, checklist for new development and that it gets definitely gets points and everything if it's included in, in new development. So um, I'm sure that it can, can also be recognized and, and maybe enhanced a little bit in that checklist and, and everything as well. I just wanted to say thank you again for coming before us because you have in the past and it's always a good uh, reminder <laughs> and uh, that we do have, um, because even in the past, uh, we looked at uh, that there were um, eggs or spawning, like the sand lines. Sand, yes, thank you. And that, that um, was recognized. And I know that one of the developments um, that uh, we've approved in the past and hope to again in the future um, shows uh, part of a creek and, and everything. So rather than having like I said about the checklist and everything, having that water go into the storm drains is hoping to collect and, and everything too, but also to get back out into um, the bay. And that, so thank you. Thank you. Councillor O'Brien. Thank you. And uh, th thank you very much for your presentation. Yeah, the rain gardens that you, you, you preach into the choir here. Yeah, we're, um, we're very excited and very happy to uh, take part of your tour that you showed us around uh, the possibilities of where rain gardens are possibilities and daylighting uh, creeks and so forth that have been culverted and stuff like that. We, we learned an awful lot that day and it was very helpful as Councillor Patterson has pointed out, it is on our checklist anyways, of, I believe is probably under the, the sustainability of, um, in the uh, in building applications that come to us where um, our, uh, our departments actually encourage anyways, builders to be doing this and so forth. We'll be looking at things a lot harder, I can guarantee you. Um, everything's going to be looked at with the climate lens now, and uh, that is uh, with the uh, chance of uh, enhancing and uh, recharging the aquifers around us. And we have lots of flat roofs in this town, and uh, it makes it really possible. But uh, okay. I'm really a, a, a big fan of it, and uh, thank you for your presentation again. Thank you. Well, thank you're you. each sitting with a bit of Englishman River in front of you, I see today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thank you very much for your presentation. You guys do an amazing job. We yeah. really appreciate it. The community appreciates what you do for us. Thank you. You're welcome. And we're, we're willing, you know, to, to work hey. with operations too and, and, you know, designing or, you know. We learned a lot at the Fire Hall Rain Garden in what to plant, how to plant. And what not to plant. And what not to plant, especially yes. up there. Good. We're learning. Good lessons. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Our, continuing on, our correspondence is uh, the part that uh, Councillor Patterson uh, talked about earlier. I need a mover and a seconder to receive that. Councillor Patterson, second by Councillor Chandler. All those in favor? Carried, thank you. Reports, Ms. Holmes. Look at that, she's ready to go. There we go. Good evening. Um, this is my last time you'll see me for this May, June, where you see so much of me, but tonight we're going through this statement of financial information, which is an annual legislated required report by the uh, Financial Information Act. It's required to be filed with the province by June 30th of each year. And what it presents is uh, our financial statements um, that have been audited, a schedule of any debts that we have, uh, any guarantee or indemnity agreements, which we have none. There's also a schedule of remuneration and expenses paid to or on behalf of employees and council members. And so that's included in your agenda package as well. For employees, it's employees that earn more than $75,000 a year. So those are the employees that we need to report out on. Uh, next is a statement that shows individual suppliers to whom we've paid more than $25,000. And so we need to provide a detailed list of those and then an accumulated list of all of the rest. 
And finally, a management report that states um, what management's responsibility is with respect to the financial information of the municipality. So that is starting on page uh, 20, sorry, 24 of your agenda package. Um, I will note, however, that when I was doing my final review tonight, I noticed two errors. So my apologies on that. And in front of you, you've got an amended statement of the um, accounts, the supplier payments. And one was um, where we had two McElhaney's <laughs> listed and one should have been a microserve. And then the amount um, payable to the receiver general for Canada for our policing had dropped a digit. So it uh, increased from 192,000 to 1.9 million. So I apologize for that error, but you do have a corrected one uh, in front of you. So what I would recommend in my report, there's two recommendations um, listed on the report and we just need the second one to be shown as amended rather than approval as presented. Happy to take any questions that you have on those. I need somebody to move uh, recommendations one and two as amended. Councillor O'Brien, second by Councillor Greer. Discussion. Any questions for our crack CFO? All right, you've done such a great job. You've answered all our questions. Great. Thank you very much. All, uh, all those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Mr. Russell, you're up. Um, if I may, worship for council consideration is the issuance of a development permit for phase two at uh, 377 Moliette Street South. This development permit, if approved, will add two new four-story apartment buildings to the subject property, uh, bringing the total on the site to four uh, four-story four four-story apartment buildings. Uh, I should point out, actually, in the landscaping plan of this property, there are uh, bioswales or rain gardens proposed that will take the drainage from the parking area and place it along uh, the berm that's on the west side of the property. Um, I also um, should point out that there are in the ap apartment buildings that are being added, there's 104 underground parking spaces. Um, the recommendations are per the agenda and I can clarify any questions that Council might have. Okay, I need a mover and a seconder for the recommendations one and two. Councillor O'Brien is moving, second by Councillor Greer. Discussion? Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Prish. Uh, I was hoping the uh, developer might be here to ask, answer a few questions, but because we did go through the uh, ADP and we did talk about um, stepping up there. Um, GHG sustainability to uh, to a higher step code than they have. Um, I was hoping that if they were here, I could ask them what what they plan to do. But I would think that a bare minimum of step three, given the last three projects going through that are step three and four. And the other thing I was going to ask is uh, because they do um, they do state that. Um, they have checked that they are following measures to follow lead green building standards. I know lead is a pretty high standard, so um, that's another concern I have. And then I think the fact that they have decided to put in the uh, to make the building solar ready, but why do they just don't go right ahead and put the photovoltaics on the on the roof, which is flat anyway? Um, so those are some of my concerns, and the other one being. Uh, whether the berm is going to be uh, at the same height as the, because they do say it is one continuum of the four buildings. So will the berm uh, be as high as the first buildings that they promised it would be for privacy? So those are the questions, Blaine. Thank you. Okay. 
If, if I may, your worship through to Councilor Wilson, as far as the berm goes, it was approved as part of phase one. So it's part of the phase one approval. It does vary in height throughout, but there is a cross section that they have provided um, that's in the attached uh, schedules. My recollection is, I believe they were doing step code three, but that's my recollection. Could I have a poem? Would you be able to confirm that? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, I'll call the, uh, call the question then. All those in favor of um, recommendations one and two. Carried, thank you. Mr. Russell. Certainly if I may worship, this is a follow-up report uh, for the liquor primary facility structural change application at Sunset Lanes to allow um, the liquor and cannabis, uh, I never can get their name right, the LCRB <laughs> um, to consider an application to allow for an outdoor patio space uh, on the property where liquor could be served. Um, there currently is one that's located on the parking spaces of the property. Um, this is one step in a process should um, the liquor and cannabis regulation branch ultimately approve their liquor licenses. Additional steps may be necessary to formalize the, the seating area on the property. Um, as of uh, this meeting, one correspondence was received uh, in support of the application. It was attached to the agenda. Uh, the recommendations are per the agenda, which is both in the recommendations se section, as well as in the appropriate schedule referenced. Fair enough. I need um, a mover and a seconder for the recommendations. Councillor Chandler, Councillor O'Brien, discussion. Councillor O'Brien. Thank you, Your Worship, and uh, through to Mr. Russell. Uh, so I'm just confirming anyways that this is merely uh, uh, sending our no objection approval anyways for the liquor and cannabis regulation branch. Uh, the uh, development permit will follow it at a later date where such things as parking spaces and that type of thing will be addressed at that time. Is that correct? Uh, if I may worship through Councillor Brian, if they do any land alteration or construction that will trigger a development permit. They also, in order to meet, meet be in compliance with the parking regulations, would need a variance. Thank you. All right, any other questions? I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Carried, thank you. Mr. Russell, you're just moving right along okay. here. Uh, for council consideration this evening is issuance of a development permit to facilitate um, a green shores approach to uh, dealing with erosion. Um, presently, there's a, a plywood hard surface uh, erosion protection device, AKA a seawall. Um, what is proposed is to remove that and what they call foreshore revetment work, which is essentially recon reconstructing strength in land by basically putting a rock layer, soil on top, and then vegetation. Um, it's been done in consultation with both a biologist, geotechnical engineers, and there's an attached development permit with a number of conditions that need to be satisfied. Um, the recommendations are per the agenda. And I need a mover and a seconder for the recommendations. Councillor Wilson, seconded by Councillor Chandler, discussion. Then I'll call the question. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, if I may worship is uh, consideration of essentially two things in one, I would say. Um, one is consideration of the closure of a portion of lane that's not actively being used, um, as well as uh, consideration at a follow-up meeting of proposed uh, parkland dedication. Um, in this case, they're kind of tied together. Essentially, the, in exchange for the, the closed lane, the city would be acquiring more than 5% parkland. Under subdivision, um, council may consider um, cash or 5% parkland. In this case, with the closure of the lane, it's coming close to 30% um, land, it's sort of so essentially 25% in exchange for that closed lane. But in order for us to close the lane, we have to do notice. Um, we also have to inform utilities that may or may not be impacted. In this case, we don't believe there are any utilities, but as part of due diligence, we still have to do that just in case there's a, a cable or wire that we, we aren't aware of. 
um, or in case someone else may have interest in that lien. So to this evening, we're seeking council permission to go ahead with the notice requirement. And then at a subsequent meeting, council would then be in a position to consider both the lane closure and whether or not to accept the park proposal as, as being put forward by the applicant. If there's no objections, we can take all five uh, recommendations at one time, if you like. So I'm asking for a move in the second here. Councillor O'Brien's moving, second by Councillor Wilson. Discussion? Councillor O'Brien? Thank you, Your Worship. And through to Mr. Russell, um, I have went through the background information three or four times. And I have to say that uh, your background is exceptional and uh, get, getting all the, the pricing and the comparisons as to what uh, the allocation would be and so forth was very well put out, even a counselor could understand it. So the thing is, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I think it's a, an excellent proposal, an excellent first step here. And, uh, but um, it's been very helpful to understand the full scope of it by your exceptional report. Thank you for that. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Mr. Russell. Uh, if I may, worship for council consideration is a rezoning application to facilitate automobile parking at 113 Island Highway West. Um, automobile parking is normally only permitted accessory to a principal use being on, a, on the land. So for example, if you had a retail store, um, accessory to that, you can have parking on the property. Where there is no other use on the land or there's not a related use on the land, parking needs to actually be in the zoning bylaw as a listed permitted principal use. So in this case, we have an application where they've requested um, on eight properties that sort of form one site to um, add automobile parking as a permitted pr principal use. Um, this is in support of the, the campground to the north, as well as other commercial properties in the area. In this case, the fact that there's a, a road allowance um, that in the future is envisioned to be a future potential beachside drive precludes joining the property with the properties to the north, hence necess necessitating uh, the need to amend the zoning bylaw for automobile parking. Um, from a staff perspective, we already have zones such as the downtown commercial zone that allow automobile parking as a standalone permitted use in that zone. And um, we're recommending that just the, the um, tourist commercial zone be amended on a wholesale basis to allow for automobile parking accordingly. And what that allows is any vacant property or a property that say has a building on it, but isn't actually being utilized. We're a, we're a, um, a successful business next door, could use that surplus parking area in the interim um, so that's the recommendations for the agenda, but I'm happy to, to answer any questions that anyone might have. Let's move and second this. Move by Councillor Chandler, second by Councillor Patterson. Now discussion. Councillor Chandler. Thank you, Worship. Uh, through your Worship to uh, Director Planning. Um, just on the um, on that particular piece of property, that was where the gravel parking lot was before, correct? Um, yeah. yes, so it was sir. already it was already a parking lot at that point. And, used pretty regularly by the beach club folks. If I may worship, that is my understanding. Yes. Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, thanks, Blaine, for answering some of the questions about that timeline and that you helped us. So basically, you're recommending that it is shorter timeline to put it, to do all the zoning together, I believe. And the other thing, just perhaps, you did clarify this, but maybe you could clarify it again. So I'm looking on, I think it's uh, 364, Island Highway West. No, sorry, I'm no, that's another one, pardon me. It's the eight lots where the RVs um, are. I guess if, if you're rezoning all of it, so those eight lots, they're at 113, could they effectively be parking if they decided not to make them RV lots, if we rezone that way? Uh, if I may worship through to Councillor Wilson. So the, I guess two things. So council issued a development permit that approved the, the um, I'm gonna backpedal a little further. So the zoning for many years has always allowed for campground, RV campground. 
Um, and that zone is in place both on, both on the 113 property and the 161 Island Highway West property. A development permit was issued by council that approved really the, the, how pretty essentially the site was and addressed environmental considerations because it's near the ocean. Um, the parking itself, in order for it to operate in compliance with the zoning bylaw, as a condition of that issued development permit, it required that either the property be combined with 161 Island Highway West so that they're the same property operating. Therefore, um, that parking would be able to be accessory to that actual campground. In, because of that right of way, it's difficult to, to join them as one parcel. There's a bit, sort of a barrier in the way. So that is why the applicant has requested um, to amend the zoning to allow automobile parking as a standalone use. That parking could, would be able to be used by the people in the campground or by, uh, by others, but without that use being added, essentially parking on its own without anything else on that 113 property would be contrary to the zoning bylaw. Uh, just a bit of clarification. I was just talking about the other, because it says there are eight parcels. So if I may, Your Worship, the unfortunately our GIS map is based on the tax roll. So it sometimes combines properties. So 113 is made up of eight properties and I've attached a schedule um, in the attachments. Um, I think I attached it. I was hoping to attach it. Well, you can sort of, I don't know if you can make it out on the, yeah. I think it's 168. Okay. Sorry here. You'll have to take my word that it's, it's, it's basically eight parcels. We used to own them, the city used to own them and we had eight parcels. And for some reason they were never consolidated in, into one lot. All right, Councillor O'Brien, Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Your Worship. And, just to clarify anyways, is that this parking in some time, time we, we re recognized when that land was purchased by uh, IAG, that um, they were going to use it for something probably parking. Um, also the site plans that have been provided anyways, also uh, included drawings for the proposal for the next phase, which uh, is the restaurant uh, down in the, would be the Northwest corner of the property anyways, but it also shows separate parking for that restaurant on, on site. Uh, so this would be additional parking to that. And so I just want to point out that they have already included, well, will be including in their, their next plan, yes. parking and for the restaurant itself. Yeah, thank you. Just, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. You didn't. Thank you. Um, one thing I also want to point out is when the city owned the property, the bylaw has a general provision for civic uses. So when the city owned the property, it could be used as parking, but when the city was no longer the landowner, then the parking became contrary to the bylaw as a standalone use, yeah. Follow up your worship, if I could. There was a quick comment there anyways, uh, I believe uh, from Councillor Wilson anyways, when they talked about the parking, they said that the parking could be, you mentioned the parking could be used for uh, the campground users, and you said, and or others type of thing. Is Would that be the general public as well? Or is this going to be a um, uh, only specific to users of that property? If, if I may worship through to Councillor O'Brien, uh, the zoning change could allow the parking to be used by anyone. I'm not privy to their business plan on how they would restrict that parking use, but right now the land can't be used for parking by anyone unless someone builds a, a business on the property. Thank you. Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, um, thanks, Blaine. Um, I really do appreciate staff um, to expedite uh, the, the permitted land use within the tourist commercial CS2 zone. So bringing that amendment forward, uh, is that included today? Or is this in the works to be directed to prepare and then at a future date, we would um, vote on that amendment? Um, if I may, we're shipped through to Councillor Patterson. So um, following this meeting, um, I anticipate that that bylaw would be on the next agenda for first consideration of first and second reading. 
Follow up, thank you. And so this is in the tourist commercial CS2 zone. Approximately, because I don't have a map in front of me and I wasn't um, prepared to ask this beforehand, how many parcels or how many properties could this affect? If I'm airship, that's a, a very good, a very good question. Um, so there's 42 properties in total, eight of which are this property. They're clustered in three areas in the city. So park, the Parksville Bay area on sort of both sides of the highway, there's properties that have tourist commercial zone. The other area, there's 28 in total, eight of them are, are these properties. There's um, five properties by the Orange Bridge. And then there's nine properties in the resort area that are on the waterfront side of Resort Drive. All right, anybody else? Let's call the question. I have just one question if I could. This is not going to slow down the development for the, for the landowner at this point in time. If I may worship, I believe it would actually speed it up a That's, little. You, you've answered the question. That's all I needed to know just to confirm it. Thank you. I will call the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Ms. Weeks, I think we have you on the part next. Thank you. Uh, so this report is for council consideration to amend the city's election procedure bylaw to provide for access to nomination documents, advance and special voting opportunities, additional voting opportunities, as well as an update to the recount procedures for the city's local government election. The Local Government Act requires some of these processes to be outlined in the city's bylaw. Therefore, in accordance with legislation, staff are bringing the amendment bylaw forward for council consideration. Changes to election bylaws must be adopted by July 4th and recommendations for the council agenda. Thank you. I need a mover and a seconder for the two recommendations. Councillor O'Brien, seconded by Councillor Wilson. Discussion, questions, comments? Call the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Much easier than you thought, wasn't it? <laughs> You're away. Thank From you. From the CAO. Um, if I may, Your Worship. Um, we usually bring this uh, report to council at this time every year, and it's hard to believe that we're getting to this stage already, but um, having just come back from AVICC, we are now approaching the deadline for submissions from council to UBCM. Uh, so UBCM is the Union of BC Municipalities and they meet every year in September um, with municipalities from all across BC and all of the ministers and provincial agencies are in attendance. And it's council's opportunity to bring issues forward uh, that they believe are broader than Parksville's issues, but also include um, significant issues that might affect just Parksville and, and we need minister uh, discussion or minister support for some changes at the provincial level. And so we've included some of the previous items that this council has uh, met with ministers on or, or discussed with ministers just for the public's information and reminders um, and for council as well. And essentially, if you're looking to uh, request meetings from the ministers, we, we do need to do that tonight. Um, just because of the timelines. And we provided uh, some sample wording if there's a desire to meet with anybody. And usually we're required to um, explain or, or say a little bit about the issue. We have to also let them know who's gonna be in attendance. So we typically say all of our council, but we have the opportunity to invite the MLA. In this particular situation for us, it's MLA Adam Walker. Um, and then sometimes we are able to invite others. So for example, on a previous occasion, we met with um, one of our partners uh, with the RDN when there was a matter that was more regional in nature. And so we're looking for council direction tonight. And recommendations are just to receive at this point. First off, let's put the recommendation in. Councilor Patterson moving the recommendation, Councilor Greer seconding it. Discussion, let's, does anybody have anybody in particular they wish to speak to? Councillor Patterson, you go. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, as, as I was looking back um, in our agenda and our previous uh, background with some of our, our ministers, I think it's very prudent that we hold 
um, the course with uh, our Minister of Health and Municipal um, Affairs and Housing. I think those are, are two of our key components of, of this term that we've, we've uh, raised uh, questions and concerns and have started to have a feedback and and a relationship, especially with um, with the health uh, organization and everything in our community. So I would uh, appreciate having, and I can can get together with yourself and other counselors and everything too, um, to try and get uh, a specific request on the table for those particular two, in my case anyway. Thank you. You wholeheartedly have my support on both of those, by the way. Councillor Chandler. Thank you, Worship. I would like to uh, consider. Sorry. Sorry, Doug. Go ahead. Go I ahead. would like to consider being able to um, see the Minister of the Attorney General, uh, Minister of the Attorney General, just to uh, discuss um, stiffer penalties and so on. And then, secondly, um, looking at the Minister of Public Safety, maybe as well, just to talk about problems within the core of each of the towns that, you know, that was a big discussion, if I recall, at the AVICC, if, if, if I'm not wrong on that. Um, I read some notes about uh, that I didn't attend, but I saw that that was a very, very large discussion point there. So I'd, I'd love to see those two on the agenda and be able to get appointments with both those. So, thank thank you. you. Councillor O'Brien, my apologies. No worries, Your Worship. Uh, thank you. Um, I would like to propose a meeting uh, for all of council with the Ministry of Transportation to discuss the, um, the interchange proposal and the uh, uh, connection across the Orange Bridge, including the uh, possibly uh, pedestrian overcross uh, over the river and right up to the uh, resort drive. I understand Ministry of Transportation is working on it, but we have another very large pending possible development that's happening up there. I feel that it would be prudent that the council uh, has uh, an idea of what the Ministry of Transportation is uh, planning for that area. I know that they are working on it, uh, but I think uh, since it's in September, we should be able to uh, be uh, brought in uh, to the picture uh, for hopefully our comments and consideration. And I would include the, the uh, invite uh, to MLA Walker as well. Fair enough. Anybody else with any? Requests. Okay, so I'll touch base on most of whom I wish to speak to. So I think we're covered off on that. Very interested in talking to the Minister of Public Safety. Uh, that's, that's one, and, and of course the Health Minister. But uh, and Modi is an, is another good one. I think we need to if we're if we're going to be right up to the edge of the bridge with our. Um, Raft Trevor, I think we need to go a little bit further with them and get them to commit to when. I mean, we've done a really good job of getting them to this point. Now we just need to push them a little bit farther. I wouldn't. You're thinking about pushing them in the river, right? <laughs> All right. So, do you have a, a fairly extensive list? Yeah, I mean, we all know that we're, we probably won't get to see a lot of those individuals, but hopefully we get a couple of them and they're all very important. So we go from there. So do we need to call that? We, we did call, call the vote. If I may, Your Worship, um, we did just receive information. I don't think we've called that one yet, nope. um, but I, and I, I'm not sure it might be helpful just for me to quickly read over and Please. make that a motion as well after you receive after you do the motion to call the question on receive, then I'll read out to make sure I didn't miss it. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I'll call the question to receives. <laughs> All those in favor. Carried. Thank you. Now, please go forward. Thank you. If I may, Your Worship. So what I believe we have is a motion to meet with the Ministry of Health, uh, the Mi Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. I think it's one ministry, but I'll double check that one. Uh, the Ministry of Attorney General, uh, the Ministry or Minister of Public Safety, and Ministry of Transportation Infrastructure. And um, I'll summarize the, the issues. We get a very short couple of lines that were allowed. So I think we have enough from council's direction to explain the issues that you want just, to talk about. Just a question, Minister of Public Safety is the, in charge of the RCMP, right? I believe so. Yeah, that's the one I would like so. on my 
Yeah. yeah. We'll look. I'll, they have changed some of their things lately, but we'll look everybody. Okay. Up. Fair enough. Councilor Patterson, you have a comment. Thank you, Worship. Um, just being said that being said, do we require a motion at this point in time to direct our CAO and, and staff to to reply? So if so, can I we put can. that forward now yeah, with that's unanimous fair. We can do support? That. Yep. I think that I think it'll probably get unanimous support. I would be my guest. Pardon? Um, if I may, Worship, it can arise out of the discussion. And I think it's just to endorse. Yep. Yep, we that's fine. We'll do I, didn't miss I need a seconder. It was Ficklin. Councillor O'Brien is seconding. And I'm just going to call the question because I think we're all in favor of the motion. Carried. Thank you. All right. Put the glasses back on here. Bylaws three readings the election procedures and automated vote counting authorization amendment bylaw 2022, number 1506.2. And that's so that we can use the automated um, election or voting machines, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Ms. Weeks? Is that what we're using up the vote for? I know your worship. Yes, that's correct. And it's um, just the, um, from my report, it's the amendments to the bylaw. All right, fair enough. I need a recommendation. Somebody to move and second the recommendation. Councilor Patterson, Councilor Greer. Discussion on this, Councillor O'Brien. Thank you, Your Worship. If I could have a question, probably back to Ms. Weeks as well. Uh, does this also allow uh, for the inclusion of, of voting uh, options to be uh, uh, to be portable as they, as they have been in the past to like some of the seniors' homes and so forth? So so that is going to be included um, as well this year. To Your yeah. Worship, yes. That's, that's all I need to know. Thank you very much. All right, and I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? Carried. I'm looking for new business. Is there any new business on the table? Okay, notices of motion for the next meeting. All right, moving right along. Just a reminder, our next regular council meeting will be held on Monday, June the 20th, immediately following the adjournment of the public hearing scheduled for 6 p.m. I need a mover and a second to move to proceed into a closed meeting pursuant to 91I of the community charter. Councillor Wilson, Councillor Chandler, all those in favor? Carried, thank you.